Happy Friday. Okay, so this is not exactly best new thing in the world territory, but it's close. Uh, because starting last night and then carrying on all through the day today, this... Can I point at it? Yes, I can. Uh, was one of the hashtags that was trending on the Twitter machine. And even if you do not use Twitter, and so the idea of something trending doesn't really resonate with you as a measure of volume, <laughs> I'm telling you, you will still get this, I promise. So the hashtag is InfoWars Pickup Lines. People are making up imaginary pickup lines for conspiracy theorists. The idea is that if, if you like InfoWars, which is a show hosted by a man named Alex Jones, uh, if you like Glenn Beck and you like Alex Jones, who says we uh, faked the moon landing and that 9-11 was an elaborate hoax and that it was secretly the White House that bombed the Boston Marathon, Michelle Obama was totally in on it. And also there was no massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School. All of those things were hoaxes. They were all faked by the government so we can be enslaved in FEMA concentration camps with the black helicopters and have our organs harvested for the aliens or whatever. If you are one of those folks, if you are a conspiracy theorist who believes in the Glenn Beck, Alex Jones view of the world, well, that doesn't mean you don't need love. And so, hashtag InfoWars pickup lines. What's your sign? Mine is trespassers shot on sight. InfoWars pickup lines? Girl, are you a secret government orbital mind control laser? Because I can't get you out of my head. Or this one, have we met somewhere before? No, seriously, who sent you? <laughs> the whole thing started, I think, uh, when someone outside the conspiracy theory world realized last night that within the conspiracy theory world, within specifically the conspiracy theory online Alex Jones world, there is a dating service called Dating Freedom Lovers. And so you can browse all the publicly available profiles at this dating site to find guys and gals who might think to advertise in their dating profile that they live just far enough outside the major cities to relocate easily with multiple safe routes to the less populated parts of the continent. Or that uh, this woman says she experienced her political awakening in 2006 after a flu shot. It's a little different than most dating sites in that some folks identify themselves geographically in unfamiliar ways. Uh, this gentleman who in his picture is holding a big fluffy kitty, uh, he says in his profile that he lives in FEMA Region 9. So you have to know where that is if you want to meet up with him. So it's a whole world out there, people. Life is a rich, paranoid tapestry for the conspiracy theorists among us. But the fact that they have a conspiracy theorists only dating site organized as part of the online scene for this website and talk show, it is a reminder that there's money to be made here. Right? There is money to be made in feeding the ragged edge of America's long-standing conspiratorial mindset. If you can get enough people freaked out enough to believe that you are the only person who will tell them the truth, that is a captive audience that kind of needs you for everything. So, you know, dating. If you're on the Glenn Beck side of the conspiracy theory empire, that means pants. Literally, Glenn Beck will sell you patented Glenn Beck freedom pants. Congressman Ron Paul, who has a lot of interesting things about him, but who has also always counted on the conspiracy theorists to be part of his base. Now that Ron Paul has left Congress and he's out of office, he's decided to go back into business with the conspiracy theory guys who used to do his overtly racist Ron Paul branded for-profit newsletter in the 1990s. He's kept those guys on board for his new institute that he's starting. And then naturally today, Ron Paul went on the Alex Jones radio show. Remember, the chief Alex Jones conspiracy theory right now is that the White House bombed the Boston Marathon. The government did it as a false flag attack as part of a New World Order conspiracy involving Marxism and fascism and helicopters. And I think there was something about Mexico, but honestly, I got a little lost trying to figure it out. That's what Ron Paul did today. He spent the day with Alex Jones. And, you know, I'm sure it's good for business. These guys have a good racket going, and, and they have all been in the racket for decades. You know, it's always, it's always the end of the world, but not quite yet. Subscribe for one more month, because then it'll be the end of the world. Only 1995, and yes, you can pay in gold. But what do we do when it is not just the hilarity on the internet? When it is not just your personal sadness that your crazy uncle sends Glenn Beck part of his social security check every month because he's terrified? 
What, what do we do when this stuff gets so mainstreamed on the American right that it seeps out of the far edge of your AM radio dial at 3, and, 3 in the morning? It seeps out of that lucrative fringe market and it leaks into, say, the U.S. Congress. Last week, four Republican members of Congress sent a letter to the Department of Homeland Security demanding that the Department of Homeland Security respond to the latest Glenn Beck, Alex Jones conspiracy theory, which is that the real Boston Marathon bomber was being protected by the White House, by Michelle Obama. The Republican chairman of the Homeland Security Committee in the House signed on to that letter. They moved on from that last week to now this week, the Republicans convened a whole congressional hearing, a House Committee on Government Oversight hearing on the right-wing conspiracy theory that the government is stockpiling ammunition to kill us all or something, or to, to at least buy all the bullets so that you can't get any, so that you can't stop them from killing us all. This is a longtime favorite cause of the InfoWars world, and now it's playing in Congress. The congressman you see on your screen right now is Republican Kerry Bentivoglio of Michigan. You'll remember him as a reindeer herder. Last seen on this show, shirtless and kissing a stuffed reindeer. You may also remember his role playing a doctor in a movie about how 9-11 was an inside job. Now that same Kerry Bentivoglio plays a Republican congressman in real life. I have a lot of people calling me up and saying that there's uh, all these conspiracies and so forth and so forth. You, you've probably heard them. Doomsday events, civil unrest, you're preparing for that. Do you have any operational plans in the event there's a major or a civil unrest that you're going to arrest innocent civilians and put them in FEMA camps? Do you have any plans like that? No plans. The answer is clear. You have no plans whatsoever. None. Right. How about anything else like that? No plans at all. Congressman Bentivoglio got the guy from Homeland Security on the record, admitting no plans to enslave the people of America yet. <laughs> but they better not try, because today Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe introduced a bill to block government agencies from buying ammunition, along with Oklahoma Congressman Frank Lucas, because, you know, I live in FEMA Region 9 or whatever. Want to meet my kitty? Conspiracy theories are not new. They are not even the exclusive providence of the American right. There are left-wing conspiracy theories, too. But right now, anti-government conspiracy theories are anti the Obama government. And that appears to be too convenient and too appealing for the supposedly mainstream right to leave unharvested. And so the fringe has become the center. And so the Republican chairman of Homeland Security is writing conspiracy theory letters about the real bomber. And they're convening conspiracy theory hearings. And Republican senators are introducing conspiracy theory legislation that actually posits that the government is stockpiling bullets so it can kill us all. And they're doing it upon the advice from the folks who say that the Newtown shooting was a hoax. It didn't really happen. And Michelle Obama is shielding the real bomber of the Boston Marathon because it was an inside job just like 9-11. I get that the guys who sell this stuff for a living have a reason to sell this stuff. There's always going to be a very, very, very exciting market for these things. But when a political party sees profit in it, when a political party decides to seek political advantage by trafficking in this stuff and courting it and popularizing it, that is a different thing. And I am not sure we know how that ends. That does it for us tonight. We'll see you again Monday night. Now it's time for the premiere of Caught on Camera, Terror in Boston. Please have a great weekend.